Lori Groves and News Center 13, where the news comes first 24 hours a day. with David Letterman. <laughs> Tonight, Catherine O'Hara, musician David Sanborn, and chef Deborah Ponzak, plus Paul Schaefer and the world's most dangerous man. And now, the last best hope for America, David! Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you dialing up the big program tonight. My name, uh, I'm Dave, frankly, I'm the host. Oh, yeah. uh, are you interested in things about uh, television and broadcasting? Listen to this. Last week, you know there are three commercial television networks in the United States. You have ABC, of course, you have CBS, and of course NBC. Now, you have the upstart Fox, the beginning network. They've been in business uh, three, four years. For the first time since all of those networks have been competing each other, Fox defeated NBC last week. NBC was the fourth rated network last week. Yeah. Oh, no. Let me give you an idea what this is. This is like losing a spelling bee to Dan Quayle. That's the ignominy. I'm not, I'm not worried about Fox because I, I've heard that most of their equipment is rented. So who? <laughs> Uh, there are now rumors that uh, there is some pressure being applied to the White House, to George Bush, to dump Dan Quayle from the ticket. Do you think that would be a good idea? Yeah. Yeah. They say that he is considering uh, replacing Dan Quayle with Dick Cheney. I don't know about that. And they also say that he's considering dumping Barbara and, <laughs> and replacing her with Sharon Stone. See, I think, wow, there's, there's your ticket right there. Yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, the New York Times made a mistake. They published the wrong winning lottery numbers for the New York State Lottery. <laughs> honey, honey, you know that Winnebago we bought this morning? <laughs> I, I believe that's going back. <laughs> uh, on the program tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Catherine O'Hara is here. A fine, oh, she, this woman, uh, was one of the stars of one of the uh, biggest money-making uh, blockbuster films of all time, which was Home Alone, uh, Shrinking the Kids, Part 1. <laughs> Catherine O'Hara is here. Also, David Sanborn is back there. And we... And uh, we have the uh, rising young chef. Is that how it is? The rising, the best rising, the fastest rising, <laughs> the, the rising chef of the year is with us this evening, ladies and gentlemen, to cook, to prepare a bouillab lobster bouillabaisse. Bou yes, Deborah Panzek is here. Now is our friend uh, Paul Schaefer is right over there, boys. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. 
Dave, you know, it's, it's so nice and quiet and concentrated in here. I wanted to just share something with the audience about that moment that we often have when you come out and whisper something sort of secretive to me and we on your way out and we have our own little laugh about it. You know that, that moment we sometimes have. Well, tonight, you crazy... Minute, Paul, did it ever occur to you that perhaps the reason I'm whispering it to you is because I don't want everyone in America to know? <laughs> did that dawn on you? Well, maybe, but I think this is so cute. This yeah. line you said tonight was so okay, cute. I hope you this. don't mind I if don't I mind share that. it. Okay. You came out, you leaned over to me, and you, and you said, who the hell is that guy with the conga drums? Which I thought... <laughs> was just the cutest thing to say. But it's Don Elias, David. It's say hello to him, Don Elias, who came, with, came along with David to, to help him out on his feature number tonight. And David brought a couple of other lovely cats from his own band. You've been here before, haven't you? Yeah, I thought I'd uh, recognize you. And of course, David Sanborn, ladies and gentlemen, the man who invented the saxophone is with yeah, us. Yeah, I didn't know that. I don't know if people are aware of this or not, but in the very beginning of David's career, he recorded under the name of Davy S. <laughs> That's true. And then, and then... <laughs> then what? Then what? It, it didn't work, so he just went back to David David's Sanborn. Nice. But for a while, and if you can get one of those early Davy S. Davy S. CDs, <laughs> snap it up because it's, it's worth a lot of money. Oh, you know, my mom, bless her heart, my mom, if you're out there watching, Happy birthday, Mom. My Aww. mom had a birthday last week. That's lovely. Dorothy. Dorothy. That's her name, Dorothy. How old is Dorothy? She is just a, she's a, a year older than I am. Ah. <laughs> She was a young mother. So I, uh, I'm calling mom to say happy birthday on her birthday, and I'm using, uh, a few years ago for Christmas, the staff gave me a car phone, and I, and I make great use of the car phone, and I was calling mom on the, the car phone, okay. and I said to mom, you'll, you'll never guess where I'm calling from, and she said, where? And I said, I'm calling from my car. Long, quiet, silent pause. Yeah. Finally, mom says, you don't expect me to believe that now, uh. do you? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Mom. I'm lying to you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the whole thing about birthdays, uh, I had, of course, pick out a lovely card and shoot it off to my mom, and I, I was uh, downstairs. What's the name of that card shop downstairs? Is it the Little Kitty Card Company? <laughs> what, what is it? They're always going out of business. So you know the big card shop down there? It's the you know little bitty card shop. What is the name shop. of it? Happy, is it party? What is the name party of it? Party Bazaar. Par the Party Bazaar. So party I was bizarre down there in the shop. Party Bazaar looking at, uh, to get a nice card for my mom. They have, I mean, it's unbelievable. They have, you can get a Mother's Day cards, Father's Day cards, of course, uh, Easter cards, uh, birthday cards, uh, re religious uh, uh, cards, uh, all manner of, uh, of uh, greeting cards, and they have a wonderful array, uh, array of cards, and I thought, this is, this is great. I'll bring some of these up and, and share them with the uh, studio audience tonight. So that's uh, what we're going to do. Yeah. Just some greeting cards I find, found down there in the Hello Kitty store, or whatever that is. <laughs> You don't expect me to believe that now, do you? <laughs> like she'd never heard a bigger lie in her life. Uh, here's a card that helps you share something uh, important about yourself. Just thought you'd like to know, I've got an ulcer. See, that's... Isn't that odd that they would put that on there? Uh, this is popular in urban areas. I'm the one who rubbed up against you in the subway. That is... A Beautiful, beautiful sentiment. That is lovely. I think you'll find when it comes right down to it, most of your perverts really are quite thoughtful. <laughs> send, you, send you a little follow-up greeting. <laughs> uh, here's one uh, that's thoughtful and functional for my new address called the Missouri Department of Corrections. <laughs> yeah, look, at, look at this little boy here. He couldn't be happier. Woo! <laughs> Paul, if we have another one of those little happy cartoon greeting card characters, how about some happy boy music? Okay, happy boy music. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Surprisingly, this is a bestseller. I know you're angry about the stitches. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at how happy this boy is right here, though. Look at this boy. Oh, he couldn't be happier, this guy right here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, it never hurts to say thanks even in the most unusual circumstances. Uh, look at this one. You were the best hostage we ever had. Uh, this might help when you're uh, searching for just the right words of apology. Sorry for tampering with your brakes. <laughs> oh, oh, get ready, Paul. I think we may have another happy boy here. Here's one. Uh, it's a great way to help uh, a friend celebrate a happy event. Legally insane, congratulations! <laughs> no, I, I think we want something that suggests a little more frenzy. Oh, frenzy music? Yeah, fr okay. happy frenzy. Test me one more time. All right, happy we'll come back to that. Oh, hey, wait a minute, right here. <laughs> Sometimes a card is the best way to break the ice. Here we go. D didn't we meet in prison? Look at how happy that guy is! Uh, this one offers a nice thought and may help uh, cover you legally. You're over 18 today, and if you're not, the fact that I thought this card proves I think you are. The fact that I bought this card proves I think you are. Yeah. Uh, Grandpa will get a, get a kick out of this one. Uh, now that you're too old to drive, may I have your car? You don't expect me to believe that now, do you? No, oh, Mom. Just me goofing around. I'm in the next room, Mom. How could I possibly be phoning from the car? Here's a perfect way to end a relationship. Let's just be friends, friends who never talk or see each other. Mm -hmm. I like this one. This one offers a diplomatic way to get something off your chest. <clears throat> Why is it you're always trying to bite me? <laughs> Here's a card that goes a long way towards smoothing over an awkward situation. Get well soon. I promise I'll be more careful next time you ride my Ferris wheel. <laughs> Here we go. Get ready for some more of that happy boy music. Uh, they don't sell a lot of these, but it's a nice that they have them in stock. Uh, I hear your baboon liver is taking. <laughs> Okay. This one's become very popular recently. Uh, sorry I dropped out of the presidential race. Uh, <laughs> now, here's a gentle and honest way to uh, break some bad news to someone you care about. I love you, darling, but I'm going to have sex with someone else. <laughs> and finally, here's a card that really shows you care. Have you passed your stone yet? Uh, did I mention who's on the program? We have Catherine O'Hara, David Sanborn, of course, and rising chef of the year, Deborah Ponzek. Please, ladies and gentlemen, come on back if you can. accept the nomination. Thank you very much. <laughs> On the program, Catherine O'Hara, David Sanborn, and uh, we're going to cook. We're going to have uh, lobster bull, bull, bullabes. <laughs> Oscar, bull, bull, bullabes. Exactly. Well, you know, you always cook as far as I'm concerned. Oh, uh, thank you very much, Paul. And you know, I, I think the same of you as <laughs> thank well. Thank you very much. Here's our uh, top ten list for the evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Top ten things overheard on the Clinton-Gore campaign bus. Uh, right after... <laughs> 
Right after the Democrats broke up their convention last week in New York, uh, Al Gore and his people and Bill Clinton and his folks all got together on a campaign bus and they're driving around the world. Man. <laughs> raising votes. Sounds great. Yeah. Sounds like a kind of a Ken Kesey kind of a psychedelic experiment. You know, I was, I was just thinking that my own self, Man, Paul. that's great. Top 10 things overheard on that uh, Clinton uh, Al Gore campaign bus. Wow. Here we go, number Let 10. Me on that bus. Huh? Let me on that bus. Yeah. Number 10, slow down, a convertible full of babes. Number nine. Okay, Hillary, you pretend you're the naive motorist and I'll be the angry state policeman. Uh, number eight, my lifelong dream, entering Howard Johnson's through a bus lane. Number seven, I forgot again, am I Thelma or Louise? Number six, is that Jerry Brown hitchhiking? Number five, Never mind my energy policy. Let's see if this whale can do a hundred. <laughs> Number four, Tipper, are you crazy? You don't moon truckers. Number three, it's day five, Al. Would a shower kill you? Number two. Number two, look out. It's Ben Vereen and the num Folks, come down here one by one and I'll fight you. <laughs> ben is doing just fine. Everything's going to be fine. And the number one thing overheard on the Clinton Gore campaign bus no, ma'am, this isn't the trash train. There you go. Okay, all right. They sort of seemed to enjoy that one at first, and then when they had a second to think it over, they got really very angry. Wow. <laughs> uh, our first guest, of course, is a uh, veteran of SCTV, and uh, her motion pictures include the blockbuster Home Alone and the upcoming Home Alone 2. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is, the lovely, the talented, the gifted, the brilliant, Catherine O'Hara. Catherine! <laughs> Good to see you. You too, thank you. You look great. Have you lost weight? Have you changed something about yourself? Are you doing something different? You're Perhaps I got married. Congratulations on being married. <laughs> Somebody loves me. <laughs> it's, it's the glow of a newlywed. Is that what it's it is? It's someone who's loved. Yeah, good for you. How long have you been married? Uh, since uh, April 25th. Mm -hmm. You want to tell us a little bit about the man you're married to, about the circumstances, about the engagement, I'm about the courtship? I to tell you about all of it. Tell us, tell uh, us anything. We got engaged on Christmas Day. Give me a giant box. And How long box, had you known the guy? Box. Uh, I've known him for five years. Mm -hmm. I met him on Beetlejuice. He designed the sets. All right. His name's Bo Welch. All right. He uh, designed the sets recently on Batman Returns. big Batman Returns. film, that's right. Yeah, yeah, he's great. This guy's got a lot of money, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I don't ever have to work again. <laughs> uh, uh, um, yeah, our families got together for the first time, came to the wedding in How LA. was that? Was that... Uh, it was wonderful. It was beautiful. They all got to meet, and they're all great, and they're all funny and uh -huh. fun. Uh, they all got to feel an earthquake the night before the wedding. Oh, gosh. Or two nights before the wedding. My mom and dad, thank God they didn't know what it was. So my mom was lying on the bed in the <laughs> hotel room, and my dad was in a chair. My mom's like, oh, God, Mark, this is one of those vibrating beds. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's in a chair. They got this working, too. <laughs> You. Oh. But, and then it was over. And thank God, by the time they realized what That's it was, That's a conversation my mom could get into. You don't, <laughs> you don't expect me to believe it's an earthquake. <laughs> How was the big uh, ceremony itself, then? Uh, it was wonderful. I, though, must admit that I was an hour late. Now, see, I, I find this Im impossible I to know. believe. The one it's thing disgusting. you don't want to be late for, if anything, you would be like uh, two or three hours early. You'd yeah. be so you eager and nervous and stuff. <laughs> no, I was playing hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> so I forgot to do that earlier. So I waited to the... <laughs> no, uh, I don't know what happened. I laid on way too many things to do in the morning before, and uh, my sister Mary Martin and I was my maid of honor. We were getting ready, and How do you start that okay? big day? Do you start the big day with a big pancake breakfast? Is that how you start <laughs> it off? <laughs> I gotta fill out this dress. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went up. Yeah, I went 
out shopping. I was doing, <laughs> see, you know, I went out shopping for food because I invited my three sisters over for breakfast. Thought we'd all get our hair and makeup done together. Uh -huh. Oh, that's <laughs> you know, fun. Yeah, that was fun, except it took a long time. Uh -huh. And uh, then my sister and I finally got in the car. The wedding was at two. It was out in Malibu. I was in Hollywood. And, uh, which is a long way, and a long drive. And we had to pick up my mom and dad in Santa Monica on the way. And we get into this great uh, 59 Cadillac, which we rented. And the driver had told me a few days before, it's, it's going to be really hot and I have no air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Should I get another car? No, it's okay to look cool. You know? <laughs> so we get in the car. The wedding's at 2. I say, what time is it? He says, 10 to 2. Oh, Mary, what do we do? What do we do? And yeah. she's like, I, did, I didn't get, I took... Did I take too much time? I said, no, it's okay. What do we do? And then we just thought, let's pray. Pray that, everyone, that everyone's okay, that no one's mad at us. Because we knew we wouldn't be able to call until we got to the uh -huh. hotel. It was just, and it was so hot in the car. I had a little fan. We kept trading back and forth. But I was like laid out like this, trying to keep my dress yeah. from wrinkling down here. It was just like, just the saddest. <laughs> we finally get to the, the wedding. And by that time... How late are you when you show up? More than an hour. I would think it would be I'm over sorry. an hour, yeah. The priest had a nap. It was like so sad. <laughs> and, and Bo, who wanted to like wait to make an entrance like I got to do, um, finally I gave up and came out and talked to people. And, <laughs> and, uh, there was, and luckily there was a yard sale going on at the church. So we got some wedding oh, gifts. Very, very nice place. Yeah, this Actually is great. Yeah, well, is there a petting zoo connected with the church as well? <laughs> uh, oh, now, don't be crass. I'm sorry. We're so, talking about the house of God. Now, what do people think that the bride has not showed up here for this? Um, they were scared, but then they thought, nah, she's always late. It's mm -hmm. okay. Nobody worried about you know, it. No, but then when, when uh, Bo was outside with Bo, my husband, I keep saying Bo, like you all know Bo. Yeah. Um, he was outside with them, and, and when the car, when they finally saw us showing up, the, he said, everybody hide. <laughs> now, now, like it's a surprise party now. <laughs> You know, making this lovely bridal entrance, my face is just like this. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then the ceremony went off as planned, and everybody yeah, had a good day. All right, good, good for you. Let's let's do a uh, commercial here. We'll come back with our old friend Catherine O'Hara. You guys sound great again tonight. It's amazing. You sound terrific. Night after night, and then you have the two other guys here, and it's a, it's wonderful. <laughs> Everybody sounds quite nice. Thanks for being here. No, knock it off. <laughs> Catherine O'Hara is here. Uh, you know, it occurs to me that this, uh, your husband, Bo, who is a, what is the term for what he, what is his title? Production designer. Production designer. That's a lot of work, isn't yeah. it? Because is he responsible for conceiving and executing every non-human thing in the movie? Yeah, basically the look of the movie, yeah. oh, along well, with the director. Well, that's far more uh, work than, than what an actor or an actress like yourself would do, isn't it? I know, it? I know, I'm just, it's too awesome. <laughs> it is, he builds cities. Yeah. Uh, and then, so you have the, the big wedding ceremony, and then you go to uh, where? Italy. A big honeymoon in Italy. Italy, that sounds yeah, very Venice, romantic. Positano, Florence, and Rome. And we had a great wedding gift uh, from Tim Burton, actually, who I worked with, as, uh, he gave us a driver in Rome, and a uh, private tour of the Vatican. And it was a wonderful thing we had a driver the second two days because the first day Bo and I tried driving in. Yeah. And it was like the hotel, I swear, it was a one minute walk away and we took two hours to try to get to it because the streets are just like, rrr, rrr, like that. And I had the map <laughs> and I'm supposed to navigate. It's the only time we've ever screamed at each other yeah. like this. And apparently it's true of all couples who try to drive in Rome together. But it was like, where now, where now, where now? And every street is one way. And the president was there, so there are police everywhere saying, go away, go away. And, and he's going, where now? And I go, uh, uh, I don't know. Or, where, where? I don't, nowhere, nowhere. It's like, turn there, turn, nowhere. I, I don't, I'm not from Rome. I'm from Toronto. I never said I was from Rome. They have a little Italy there, but it's not like this. Um, then we didn't drive. We had this wonderful uh, macho driver, descendant of the gladiators, <laughs> in a dub voice. And uh, we, we got I think, our, that's what, I think that's what gladiators would be doing these days if there were. They'd be exactly. driving limos, sure. He said, he said, get out of the car, go over there, see the Colosseum, take some pictures, it's very beautiful, come back to the car. And he would wait there. <laughs> <laughs> 
to the Vatican. We had this great private tour. We saw the Pope's Tim Burton, closets. the director, how does he arrange the private tour of the Vatican? Well, he was given that when he went to Italy on business or mm -hmm. vacation. I don't know. And, and uh, The Pope loves the Batman. I know that. <laughs> He has, he, has the, he has the bat signal and the little face in the cage. And right okay. <laughs> Couldn't be a bigger Batman oh, fan. Stop your crass again. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we went to the, uh, 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 on the second day, on our, we got this private tour, and then the second day we went on our own. We went to St. Peter's mm -hmm. Basilica, and uh, outside they have all these signs, the circle and the X through it, like not allowed. Uh, a female well, the figure with... The international symbol thing. Right. Yeah. A female figure with sleeveless mm -hmm. top. Uh, Excellent, no. Uh, 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 a woman with shorts, no. Any woman with shorts, no. A man with overalls? No. Bib overalls? No. No, no. no fibers. Nobody. <laughs> can't, can't come into worship. So we're laughing. Oh, I'm dying to see someone get hauled. You know, let's watch. So we go out by the door. What a great honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> we go out to the door, and I'm watching, they're not even looking at us going, they're not even watching, they're not even doing their job, and they're like, tons of police and Vatican police, and, and then men in suits, and then, hey, 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 you, you, no, meanie, meanie, <laughs> first it's like, short, short, and that's me, they're talking to. Oh, they're talking to you. Yes, and now, I have what a did nice, you, uh... I have a lovely little skirt, All right. stretchy skirt, and this jacket. Yes, I've worn it before. You show it. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't buy it for the show. Sorry. How about a flag? No. I feel lied to. I feel used Sorry. now. I, I feel Different taken cats. for granted. <laughs> like you've never worn it. No. Okay. So he says, short, shorts. And I say, no. And all of them are looking at me like I am the worst whore. You know, beyond anything in the Bible, just stone her to death. And then get up. And they're saying, you cannot go, no, 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 meanie, meanie, meanie. I said, it's not a mini. No, it's not. Look how long it is. It's a meanie, meanie. So I pulled it. I said, all right, here. And it was stretchy. Luckily, I had this long jacket on. I pulled it down so it was no longer covering my bum up here. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. And I said, there, okay. And I thought, how... Could they sit in judgment? Meanwhile, you see the same guys outside of that area, like on the street, and they're like, hey, come here, I'm going to show you something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I got you, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, Shall I leave? This beau is certainly a lucky boy, boy isn't he? Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you know, it's great to see you. How come you don't come visit a little more often, I'm thinking to myself? Uh, perhaps you should invite me. No, we invite you all the time. Try and come by again sometime. Yes, please. Soon. And, and then uh, your, like. your big film, uh, the, the Home Alone 2, comes out. Yes, in, in, these parents learn yeah. from their mistakes. Right? <laughs> yeah, the, somehow they left him at home and he survived. Work. Oh, New so York. Now, now they leave him alone in New York? Yeah, Just that'll to, kill oh, him. Another mix-up. <laughs> yep. uh, and then do you have other things you're working on between uh, now and the release uh, of that Yeah, film? I'm about to uh, direct a movie that I wrote starring wow. a lot of great actors, mostly my friends. Wow, well, good oh. for you. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, that's someone else. <laughs> oh, you're not you're not directing a film you wrote then. I got confused. Yeah, are you are you that watching are you watching a little too much TV? <laughs> hey, good to see you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Congratulations on the marriage. Catherine O'Hara, kid. We'll be right back. Tomorrow on the show, Damon Wayans will be here, a star of a brand new motion picture which has just been released or is going to be released, Bob? Huh? It is being released. It is? It has. I think it opens on Friday. Look, what, what, why am I doing this? Hello, hi. Would you, would you like some Dramamine? Uh, anyway, uh, Mo Money is the name of the film and it'll uh, be released tomorrow. That is, if I can stop doing this in time. Hee hee hee. Uh, Nick Cave will be here. Nick Cave? A marvelous young performer. <laughs> and, and from the Philadelphia Phillies, we have first baseman John Cruck. He is a marvelous young performer. Yeah, and uh, during the break, Morty leaned over and he pointed at John Cruck and he says, This guy's nuts. So, so there you go. <laughs> look forward to, to, to testing this man's sanity when he shows up tomorrow. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I don't know, have you folks seen that uh, movie, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid? Have you seen that? Unbelievable. This is the sequel to the Disney film of uh, like a year or so ago, which was Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And I had a private screening arranged for myself and some friends last night. Went to see Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. Paul Schaefer, our very own friend Paul Schaefer, has a 
Is it a cameo? Or oh, it's, a, it's just a little small part Yeah, but it's very it. entertaining. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to embarrass you by saying you steal the film. No, but don't it, say that. But it's very, very entertaining. They asked me to do a little thing, yeah. and it was, you know, I flew out and did it in one do, day. Do we have time? Morty, do we have time work. to see it? Yes, you wanna, do you mind, Paul, if we take a if look at it? If you want to show it, it was just... Yeah. All right. I think you'll get a kick out of this. Does it, do we need to set this up, Paul? You want to set up the scene? I'm not sure which clip this is that you have. Uh, no, it would be, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be fun okay. to show. All right, this is uh, Paul Schaefer in uh, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. Uh, well, roll it, Hal. Hey, you giant kids, stay out of my yard. Fun. I had a lot of fun doing that. <laughs> uh, let's do a commercial when we come back here. Uh, David Sanborn will entertain you folks. <laughs> yeah. Man, now we got a lot more guys over there now, don't we? All right. Gonna be very exciting, ladies and gentlemen. We're always, always really very, very happy when our next guest is able to join us on the program. He's been with us uh, on and off over the years for a long time, and we uh, are greatly, greatly uh, appreciative of his uh, efforts here. He is uh, performing a song from his uh, newest CD, of which I have a copy here in my left hand. It's entitled Up Front. Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello once again to David Sanborn. Kids, go ahead and...
Norway, David Sanborn, ladies and gentlemen, and the band. Thank you, gentlemen. Nice to have you here. Mr. Sanborn will pause for a commercial and continue right after this. When I hear music like that, it makes me want to get a studio and put on a TV show. Now you're talking. Our next guest, ladies and gentlemen, is the latest, uh, latest, oh, the latest, oh. <laughs> is the latest recipient of the Rising Star Chef of the Year Award, given annually by the prestigious James Beard Foundation. From the, please, sir, if you'll hold your snickering to yourself. I... <laughs> From uh, Montrachet Restaurant, please welcome Deborah Ponzek. Deborah. Hello, Deborah. Nice to see you. How are you? I saw I saw you in the hallway, and you just you ignored me. I said hello to you. I are you sure? Very busy bouncing that ball. I didn't want to interrupt oh, you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I have a lot on my mind. <laughs> Uh, Deborah, explain to us the uh, Rising Chef of the Year Award and the James Beard Foundation. It's a real deal, isn't it? It's a real it's deal. It's not like one of those wrestling titles. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't won that one yet, but no, it's a real deal. It's right? a foundation started by Julia Child. The James Beard Foundation is in New York, mm -hmm. and the award was for chefs uh, under 30. And this means that we expect bigger and better things from you in your career, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And, and Montrachet is uh, downtown here in New York City. It's a big-time deal. It's one of the great sort of new restaurants in the city, isn't it? Yeah, it's it? about seven years old. Yeah. And if a person, say a couple from out of town, uh, or maybe a guy with his own show, <laughs> went down there, what would be the bill? How much would you stiff him for? I'd stiff him for, oh, at least 140 for two. 140 for two, that includes uh, cocktails, wine, beverages, cocktails, wine? Yeah. So that's really not so bad, it's is not it? not so bad. Yeah, and, and you'll take a little something off? I mean, uh, of the bill. <laughs> of the bill. Of the bill. Hey. We're going to have uh, bouillabaisse, bull is that what it is? Yeah, what, bouillabaisse, is that how it's Bouillabaisse. 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 Bouille mm -hmm. bouille bouille and and uh, what does it mean? It's a French word? It's actually two French words, mm -hmm. to boil and to turn down. It's to boil up the broth and then to turn it down and let uh -huh. it simmer. So we're going to get started here. So it has nothing to do really with the ingredients? No, well, it usually has uh, saffron and garlic. It's mm -hmm. a fish broth, lots of right. shellfish and, and white fish. And you know what's good is that uh, Lipton cup of soup. You ever had that? <laughs> I'll just hang this up over there. Hey, yeah. so once you start chopping up these uh, mm -hmm. fish bones, we need lots of fish bones. All right, you okay. start chopping those. How, how finely do you want them chopped? <laughs> keep going, keep going. And, then, and what do we do when we're done with these? You're gonna put them right into this pot here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, when I was a kid, we'd do this and then throw them on somebody's front porch. <laughs> what do you say? Let's run up to programming and pay them a visit. Now I've got some garlic and tomatoes, saffron. You want to deglaze a little uh, perno here? Oh, I'd be happy to. Do you want it? You want this deglazed? Deglazed. Do you, where the hell's a deglazer? <laughs> Just give it a good shot. Give well, it a I don't good know what shot. you're talking about. Just toss it where? In there? Yeah, right, right How much do you want in there? Anton, here Two we go. Good Do you have a drummer in the kitchen down there at Montreal? We should get one. All right. Add a little class to that dump. I'm gonna. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna add lobster stock. We're gonna let that simmer now. <laughs> We need lobster for okay. this lobster bouillabaisse. Let me ask you a question. It, it seems to me like when I was a kid and first started eating lobster, it it tasted different and I think maybe a little better than it tastes these days. Is that an accurate uh, impression of oh, things? I don't know. Maybe people try to put too many fancy sauces and all that other stuff on it instead of just 
The way it should be. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, Dave. Tear off the tail. Okay. All right. It's the new lobster phone from Sports <laughs> Illustrated. Hello. 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 I subscribed. I got the video and the phone. Hello. I, I couldn't be a bigger newt. There you go. Okay, all right. Ooh, yikes. Okay, now you're going to cut it down the back. Right down the middle there and get yep, that stuff out of there. Take out the meat. Okay. Woo! Oh, 30 seconds. Oh, quick, we gotta hurry, Deborah. Okay, all Let's right. go. Let's get the finished part going. Take some of the shellfish. Yep. Put, let's put this on. Well, the these, are, these are from New Zealand, these right. boys, aren't they? New Zealand, New Zealand mussels. mussels. I recognize them pretty good, don't you think? Delicious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get some of this in here. Some lobster meat. Mm -hmm. Here we go. And we can bring up the finished. Oh, look at that. Now now you pour you pour something over it, don't yes, you? We're gonna pour the finished right. Hey Paul, you wanna try some of this? Yes, okay. Paul Schaefer, has he ever been down to your restaurant? I don't think so. He's gonna have to get down. Yeah, I'd like oh, to come I'd like to come down here. Oh. Here, here, Paul. Try, try some of that. I think we need a here, this is all we have, Paul. See what you can do with that. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like camping. Yeah, well, I don't know. I have no idea here, how to get to the bottom. Here we go. All right, give it a try here. All right. Try I've some got, of that. I've here, give me one. I'll take one of those, too. Okay, here. I'm just going to do it. Oh, so well, here's some of the lobster. Sorry. Pardon me. You want to? Oh, mm. damn, tasty. That's mighty good. Very good. Very good. Mighty 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 I want to thank uh, everybody who helped us out here this evening. Of course, Deborah Ponzek, it was lovely to have her on the show. And David Sanborn, please uh, bring your buddy and come back anytime. Nice to have you again, David. And uh, Catherine O'Hara, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night, everybody.